Hi there, in this video series, I'm gonna show you how to use all of Elementor's free widget elements. It's the number one page builder for WordPress in the world, and you can get it by going to dualfox.com forward slash Elementor. There you'll be able to download the free Elementor plugin. It's gonna let you build a beautiful WordPress website, and I'm gonna show you exactly how. So please do like the videos, subscribe to the channel, and now without any further ado, let's get straight to it and dive on in. Okay, in this video, we're gonna have a look at Elementor's accordion widget and also the toggle widget. Uh, now the two are very, very similar. Uh, I think it's quite easy to get confused between them, uh, but they do serve two uh, distinct purposes. So let's have a look at both of them and I will show you how they work. So first of all, let's come on over and grab our accordion widget and let's drag that on into the page. And then I'm gonna go straight back to the widget toolbar, find the toggle, and let's drag that in underneath. Okay, so uh, the big difference straight away between these two are, um, if I open up the second one under the accordion, you notice that the top one there has automatically closed. Whereas if I open up the second one on the toggle, both remain open. So if you're wanting both to stay open, you wanna be using a toggle. If you want uh, one to close when you open up another one, you want to be using an accordion. Uh, and the other big difference between the two is, um, if you're struggling to, to try and have an accordion um, remain closed when you're uh, loading up a web page, so it's closed by default, you can't. You need to use a toggle. And likewise, if you want a toggle to be open by default, you need to use an accordion. So what I mean by that is, let's close these. So. None of them are open. If I now preview the changes, okay, this is open by default. So your accordion will always have the first one open by default. Whoops, if you don't want that, use a toggle. Uh, if, uh, if you're trying to use a toggle, then they're always closed by default, so you want to be using an accordion. So I hope that makes sense. That is how you should be using those two. Um, now let's have a look at styling this and making it actually look good. So uh, one of the things I like using these for is an FAQ. I think frequently asked questions are excellent uh, as drop downs. So if this was me and I was doing it, you know, I'd obviously have a heading in here. Let's just make this FAQ and obviously we'd style that all up and make it look nice and good. Um, but uh, a website that I really like uh, that does this well is the Dollar Shave Club. So somewhere on here, they've got an FAQ section. Here it is, right. So uh, I really like them, they're quite, quite fun and quirky. So this is the FAQ page. And the idea here is uh, as we close these down, uh, they all close, but as we open them, they stay open. So this is an example of, um, in Elementor's terms, a toggle uh, rather than an accordion. By the way, I'm not saying that they use Elementor. I don't actually think this is a WordPress website, but I, I'm just using it as an example. So if we wanted to build an FAQ that looked a little bit like this, let's go ahead and do it. I'm not gonna worry about the title or anything. Let's just go ahead and, and do this. So for this, we'd want to be using the toggle because they uh, they each stay open rather than closing down on one another. So come on over to the widget. We go to this one and in here we'll write, what do they actually say? Do I get all this amazing stuff? Okay, so do I get all this amazing stuff? So put your title in here and then whatever the answer to the question or indeed whatever the content is that you're wanting to use here, put it in this section. Remember that we can take parts of it, we can bold it up, we can put it in quotes, we can change the color all individually uh, within our content section just here. So if you are wanting to do that, go right ahead. When you're done, close down the particular tab that you had open and then move on to the second one like that. And then obviously just add an item each time that you want to, uh, or you can just click this button and then it's gonna copy what you did from before. It just duplicates it for you. Now, the next thing is the icon. So we've got the little icon here on the left. If I take a look at this again, they've actually got it over on the right. Really easy to do. All you have to do is come up to the style tab just up here, come on down to icon, and then it asks you whether you want the alignment to be on the left or whether we want it on the right. So I'm gonna move it over to the right, just like that. We're gonna come back to the style section in a moment. For now, head on back to content. And down here, we've got the icons. So we could have no icons if we wanted. You can upload your own uh, SVG, although 
WordPress doesn't like you doing it, neither does Elementor because, of course, SVG uh, is a bit of a security risk. So I suggest that you don't actually upload those files. You've got loads of choice with Font Awesome. So if we click on the icon library, it brings this up. They've already recommended the arrows for you because they are the most common, of course, but you don't have to do this. You can come on over to all icons and then we can have a look through and you can choose any of these that you actually want. Uh, if I choose a bell, insert it in, and there we go, we've got a bell. Oh, and the other thing here is um, you need to do this for both. So uh, active icon, you notice this is the one we've got active, which is why it's showing this. If I close it down, it turns back into the bell. So that's just the icon you've got uh, when it's active. So if we want, we can go in, change this to, <laughs> let's have a carrot. So insert a carrot and there we go. Now, whichever one you're choosing becomes that particular icon. And then last but not least, uh, you've got your title HTML tag. So these are your titles. If we want, we could change these. We can make them heading one, heading two, etc., etc. But let's just leave them as they were for now and come on over to style. Next up, we've got the border width. So if we increase this, you'll see that it's making the border thicker down there. We can also change the border color, come on down and alter the space. And that's gonna change the amount of space that you have between uh, item number one and item number two. And finally, you've got box shadow. So if we add this in, you see we've got a bit of shadow down there. We can increase or decrease that, move it around the page, uh, and we can also change the color as well if we wanted to. I'm gonna get rid of that though. And everything that you're seeing here, this goes for the accordion as well. So as I mentioned, it's completely the same. You do exactly the same thing. Choose your icons, come into style, uh, change the border width, change the color. So that's, that's all the same. They both work effectively in the same way. It's just those critical differences that I went through with you right at the beginning. So just make sure you are using the right one uh, if you're having any issues. Once you've done that, you can come to the uh, title tab. Now, title, if I change the background here, that's obviously just making this green, but our content section, when we collapse this, uh, we only see the green when it's open, the content section. is still a transparent color because the page background is white. If we go into color and I change this to blue, then it's obviously gonna change that title color to blue. And if we went to active color and I make it red, Notice that now this one, because this is the one we've selected, is changing to red, and if I click on this one, it happens up there instead. It's still open, of course, which is why this one is red as well. If I close that down, it becomes blue. Uh, if you're doing this on the accordion module, remember, one closes automatically when you open the next, so it would automatically do that for you. Uh, and then we also have padding, so if we increase this, it's gonna just bring these up or down, uh, and you can, of course, unlink these as well if you want to and then we can just have a separate value and you can play around with it that way. But I put it back to how it was. And we'll move on to the icon. So coming to the icon, as we already saw, you can align this from left to right. Come to the color and we can change this as well. You can also have an active color purely for the icon. So we could make that sort of a yellow color. And now only that one is going to be yellow. If I click this one, they both become it. Do it for just the one, and then it's only that one. Pretty sure you get the idea. Uh, and then if we come down to content, this is where you can start changing the content background. So we could purely have this background a different color, uh, and again, the color of our text. And you can also come in, change the typography, so increase the size, change the font family. We've been through this a lot, so I won't do that again. Uh, if you are unsure, check out the video I've done for uh, text, the text editor, and that will explain it all. So that's how all of this works. Um, if you were actually wanting to have a background that was different for the entire section, so if we go back to their uh, FAQ for a second, we see they've got this sort of slightly beigey color background that's the, the whole thing. The easiest way to do that is to, um, again, select your widget, come on over to the advanced tab, and then under advanced, come on down to background, and under background, choose uh, either a classic or a gradient. Gradient will of course allow you to have a two-tone background. And I'm just gonna go with classic, and let's try and get a sort of light beigey color. That's more of a brown, but you get the idea. Find the color that you want, and you can of course add in a hover color as well if you want that to change when you're hovering over it. And in that way, you can quite quickly put together an FAQ. Uh, now, the other thing you could also do is use a tab. So I've done a separate video on tabs if you want to get 
information about that, uh, please watch that one. But uh, just as another idea, you could also use tabs, I suppose, as an FAQ. Uh, and you don't just have to have them horizontally, you can also have them vertically as well. So you could use them in that way and then switch between the two. Obviously, the content here is the same, but if we change the content, then you'll see that when we switch between the two, it changes. So that's the other option for you. You could always use a tab. And finally, of course, as with anything uh, with Elementor, you can also have these side by side. So we could either create two columns, drag our content on into them, and then have them side by side like this. Or if you do have a single section already and you've got your title, the easiest thing to do is come on up to your widget toolbar, grab an inner section, and then that allows you to have two columns or more than two columns if you want. Uh, within that original single section. And then, of course, you could actually have your uh, FAQ sitting within those if you want to. So that's the other option. Uh, if you want to know more about the um, inner section, again, I have a separate video tutorial uh, within this playlist series about Elementor where you can learn about how to use that in full. Hopefully that all makes sense to you. Uh, if you do have any other questions, please post them on in the comments, like the video, and of course, subscribe. Next up in this video series, we're going to be looking at social icons with Elementor, so make sure to stick around for that one. Thanks again for watching.